the jig honestly can be one of the best lures to catch bass. It can be fished in multiple ways from swimming it, hopping it, dragging it, flipping, and even punching. And in this video, you're going to get to hear some unique tips from Miles Berghoff, Randy, and myself on how you can use the jig right now to go out and catch some fish. All right, everybody. So it's springtime and there are bass in all phases of the spawn. You've got bass that are waiting to move up in the pre-spawn mode. You've got bass that are actively on the beds. And then you've got post-spawners that are, are starting to funnel out into their summer haunts and also fry garters that, that are hanging around and protecting the fry after they hatch. And as far as jigs go, my absolute favorite jig to throw this time of year is a very unique jig design. You know, most jigs are designed to be fished on the bottom, kind of a hopping retrieve, maybe flip and pitch. This one right here, none of that. You're essentially fishing it horizontally, and that's why it's called the swim jig. You're, you're fishing it by just kind of tr cranking it back to the boat, almost like a spinner bait, a chatter bait, or a crank bait. Um, you're, you're casting it out there and fishing it horizontally. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can fish it. Of course, you can, you can pump the rod tip, you can shake the rod tip, or you can just reel it straight back to the boat. You can do a stop and go. The combinations of retrieves that you can use with a swim jig are just endless. Um, but the reason why a swim jig is so effective this time of year is number one, you can fish it just about anywhere in any type of cover, vegetation, uh, lay downs, bushes, around stumps, and especially around docks. In fact, docks are probably my number one favorite scenario for fishing a swim jig, especially this time of year, because docks are the perfect cover for fish in all phases of the spawn, which you're targeting with a swim jig. You can catch fish on the ends of the docks uh, that are pre-spawn and post-spawn and fry garters, or you can skip it underneath the walkways closer to the shoreline where those fish are actually spawning on the bed. So you can do just about anything with the swim jig and you can cover a ton of water. The other reason why it's so effective is because it imitates a bluegill so well, which is public enemy number one for, for bass because bluegill are constantly trying to sneak onto the beds and the bass are constantly having to, to chase them off. So I think they've got a vendetta uh, against these, these little panfish. And, uh, and so they're taking it out on the swim jig when you're fishing it, imitating those bluegill. And so usually this time of year, I'm gonna be using a swim jig that imitates a bluegill. Uh, this right here is the Z-Man snakehead swim jig. Uh, this is a, a green pumpkin type color, it really imitates bluegill really good. I like to use a Turbo Fatties as the trailer. I trim it down to size, and uh, that just has the best action in, in my book. I started throwing that a couple years ago when we designed the Turbo Fatties, and uh, man, it works wonders on a swim jig. As far as tackle, uh, heavy fluorocarbon line, 20 pound test, red, red label is kind of what I like to use. You don't need to go light with this technique. In fact, you're gonna be you know, setting the hook real hard and also fighting big fish around heavy cover. So use heavy line. Uh, and then also I use a 7.3 medium heavy versus series rod. Um, so 7.3 medium heavy gives you a lot of, of leverage, a lot of backbone. You can lead those fish away from cover and also get good hook sets. Uh, and then also I like to use a 7.2 to 1 gear ratio casting reel. So uh, heavy tackle, this is a power fishing technique and that's why I love it. Cover water with a swim jig during the spring, you're going to catch them. My tip for fishing a jig right now is for you guys that are on a budget. Fishing right now can be a little expensive as we know, and when I was a younger angler, I found a way to where I could use one jig to fish in two different scenarios. I always enjoyed swimming a jig up shallow and grass and, and swimming it and catching them fish. I also enjoyed fishing jigs offshore on rock spots and brush piles. So instead of buying both a specific swim jig and a just a specific offshore deep jig, I found a way to where one jig can be fished in both scenarios. So guys, the original jig that I did this man, which this, this jig's been around for a long time and this one even has rust on the hook, this is a Strike King Structure Jig. So the Structure Jig was made to be fishing on structure that's offshore. But what I found out is it also is great to, that can be swam. Now there's another jig that I'm using today that I actually use for both scenarios, fishing offshore 
and fishing shallow cover swimming it. And that's the six inch divine hybrid jig. It's called a hybrid jig because it can be fished in many, many different scenarios. So guys, I'm going to talk about two scenarios to where I like to swim the jig, okay? Just because I want to share with you and it's something, man, that is fun and it's about to start happening. Right now, where I'm at in Arkansas, May is here and one thing that's going to happen is the brim are about to start spawning. And there's going to be two scenarios to where you can swim these jigs to imitate brim as bass are about to go up and feed up for the summer. The first scenario is when your lakes are rising from the rain. As the water rises in some of these areas, the brim are going to go in there too and they might go ahead and make their beds around the roots of these bushes. And then the bass are going to hang by and they're going to go in there and eat it. Now guys, do not be afraid to swim this in the bushes. If there's a hole, if there's a line, you can throw this down. There are times to where for some reason fish want this more subtle action. As you know me, and probably you, I've thrown the bladed jig more than swimming a jig in the past couple years, but this is something I'm going to bring back this upcoming month. Hopefully I get a video for you guys because like I said, this is a really fun bite and you will catch big fish swimming a jig. The second scenario to where you can swim this jig, guys, is on flats. And some of them are going to be your spawning flats that you just caught your largemouth bass on. For example, what the brim are going to do, the brim are going to go in there. They're going to go on these same flats. The bass just moved out. They're post-spawn. But when they're going to come up and eat, they're going to come up and get after these brim because the brim came and messed with their beds, you know, and the bass had to protect the beds. Now it's the bass's turn. And guys, I know there's multiple ways to try to target these fish, but there is a really a time to where they want this subtle swimming movement and this more bulkier presentation. So hey guys, do not miss out. It is a fun bite and if you want to go catch a big fish, swim a jig. If you guys enjoy the content in this video and want more personalized instruction, head to our website fishthemoment.com. Then go to the virtual lessons page. Here you can book one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons with each member of the Fish the Moment team. In these one-hour lessons, the Fish Moment team member will break down your lake using Google Earth and a contour line map and answer any questions you have. Whether you're preparing for an upcoming fishing tournament or a fun weekend on the lake, make sure you sign up for one of these one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons so you're fully prepared to catch as many fish as possible on the water. Got a good tip for you guys today on spring jig fishing, which is my favorite time of year to fish a jig. So we're going to talk a little bit about some things that I think is going to add up to some really quality fish for you guys over the next month or so. So, you know, when we're talking about bass in general, specifically jig fishing, a lot of it is you have to determine what the mood and the personality of the bass is. Because depending upon a lot of different variables at certain times of the year, sometimes the fish want to chase something and sometimes they don't want to chase anything. Sometimes they want to stay on the bottom, hug the bottom and feed off of the bottom. And from my, from my experience in bass fishing over the past 50 years, I think when you start getting into that April and May time frame, specifically more in April than May, but <clears throat> when those fish are really focused on spawning as far as they're, they're getting close to spawning or they're actually, actually spawning or they're just getting done with spawning, they do not like to chase a bait like they do in other times of the year. Now, if you're fishing in the fall time of the year or the summer times, a lot of times a moving bait is highly productive because they're in a chasing mood and you can catch those fish out of a reaction reflex, but not so much in the spring in April. In April, um, like I said, I have found out they don't like to chase. They like to get something off the bottom, and that's why a jig is a highly productive uh, lure that time of year. Now, specifically, I'm going to give you guys some tips on the exact jig setup and details on the jig. Guys, the number one thing to remember in April time when you're fishing a jig is go light. Um, I like to go to a quarter ounce or at the most a three eighths. Uh, this is the three eighths ounce block at old school jig. Um, one of the things that you're gonna find out about it is the bass like a slower fall on a jig or a soft plastic in the month of April. That's why like a weightless Senko is highly productive, a light weighted lizard, something like that. So I go no more than a three eighths ounce head on my jig, preferably a quarter ounce. I want that slow fall to match the mood and the personality of the bass. Now, in order to even slow it down even more, I change up my trailer a little bit. Most of the time, I'll use like this Zoom big salty chunk right here. But in April, I go to like the Zoom Magnum Speed Crawl. Now, what this does is the Magnum Speed Crawl, since it has large legs on it, it even further slows the bait down. There's a lot of drag water displacement here. And when, the, when this bait falls down like this, the tails really help to slow it down. So a combination of a light head 
and you know some type of a of a uh, wide wobbling tail on it is going to slow it down even more and be even more appealing to the bass. Now another thing that you want to remember on that is you've got to get the right water clarity in order for these light jigs to work. This is not going to be a deal that's highly productive like in really clear water. So I'm hunting the water that has visibilities of anywhere say between eight inches and maybe two foot. That's ideal for this type of light jig setup. Now most lakes across the country, um, they have water clarity like that, depending upon the part of the lake that you're in. You can find that water clarity in that two foot zone, and that's gonna be really productive for the light jig. Um, colors totally dependent upon, again, the water clarity and the sunlight conditions. If it's really dirty, like the water visibility is 12 inches or less, I'll use the black and blue like this. If the water is cleaner, like on the two foot side, I may go to like a brown with a green pumpkin trailer, maybe diet chartreuse a little bit. And basically just pitching it and flipping it around whatever cover is available. If I have docks, I'm going to flip it around docks. If I got flooded bushes or trees, which is common in April, I'm flipping it in the flooded bushes, lay downs, whatever like that. But just stay in those spawning type areas, the flatter type areas, protected coves. Put you on a light jig like this. You know, you want a full size jig. You don't want to go, this is the time of year you do not want to use a finesse jig and just start slowly picking those shallow targets around and you can catch some really good fish on a light jig in the month of April. So hope it helps out. We'll see y'all next time.